Joining me down here on the MMA Report is a man that's going to be heading up to Canada for to fight for the unified light heavyweight title time, man. As always, appreciate time. You know, when I saw this fight announcement by Unified, one of the first thoughts I you know I thought of was uh, because, uh, you know, they just had, as we're talking, they had a card last night. And, you know, and I saw some Americans that were coming up there. And, of course, the borders open up. So how did this matchup come together for you? Uh, I started working with Dave Fish out of Paradigm, and he was giving me some fights. I've been looking for heavyweight, light heavyweight. Um, and then I had a couple guys turn me down, and then he offered me this one because he said the border just opened up. So I said, hell yeah. And then here we are. In terms of other guys turning you down as an opponent, like is that is it frustrating? Is it, in a weird way, a compliment? No, I mean, it, it's the game. Some guys will, you know, talk about, like, oh, dude, these guys are running for me or this and that. And it's like, I mean, some fights are just better than others. And, uh, you know, to be honest, like, I think everybody does it. Like, I, I don't remember ever really turning down a fight, to be honest, not to, like, make myself seem better than everybody. Mm -hmm. But it is, like, I don't know. I'm not going to hate because it's, you know, where I'm from originally in the Midwest, I feel like a lot of guys take dumb fights. You know, I took dumb fights. My third pro fight, I fought Jeff Neal, who was like seven and one with all knockouts. And it's like, that was probably a dumb fight for my third pro fight. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely think that there is something to it. Like there's, there's gotta be like an in-between. Cause I also, some guys that I used to train with from there, it's like, you know, they, they fight tomato cans and uh, that'll get you to the UFC, man. But then, you know, when you run into somebody pretty good, you know, there's a problem. So it's got to be like uh, an in-between, I think. Like, you want to take smart fights, but then you also don't want to run from fights. But it's just, I don't know, man. If I, if I got pissed off and I let it affect me, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm just going to probably get pissed off every time I try and get a fight. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny you say that because it, it thinks this conversation I had the other day with, with a regional matchmaker and, and they were saying like, you know, hey, you know, sometimes guys will get frustrated about, you know, X fight being turned down. And he said, he goes, but he goes, I get it. Like at the end of the day in the regional scene, we all know what you're trying to get to. It, it's about finding the fight that fits your style. You know, it's like. He's like, you know, he's like, he's like, hey, if you're a, a striker, he goes, if I if I pitch you a wrestler and you're say three, four fights in your career, yeah, you probably turn the fight down. Right. No, yeah, hundred percent. And it's again, you want to be able to fight a good wrestler and get you to that point. But it is like, you know, if there are better matchups available, then then you know, let's go. Like, I think around no, I was a little bit further at the end of last summer. I had turned down a couple fights. Um, just because some guys had said no or whatever, um, and then tried to fight again or, you know, because like of my list of opponents available, some of them were UFC vets. So it's not like I was looking for quote unquote easier fights, but it's like, you know, if I fight some guy who you know has a whatever record and hasn't really fought for any big promotions, it's like, where does that put me? But in the no, if I fight this guy that fought in the UFC, it's like, well, then if that's on the table, it's like, sure. So I, I actually, I did hear some guys talk about that. It's like, yeah, I did turn you down, but it was because I was actually trying to get a tougher fight. I was trying to get a guy that's going to, you know, put me in the UFC after a win like that or, you know, not still be like, all right, well, I will, you know, in, in one or two, we'll see. You know what I mean? So there, there's a lot also, I think, with promoters, they don't always tell the the fighters, you know, they'll definitely try. Yeah, I think sometimes that uh, promoters will definitely try and, like, you know, tell a fighter one thing or tell them another. It's like, they're all fucking shady, you know what I mean? It's like, to be a promoter, it's, that's just the nature of the game. It's like, I always take everything they say with, like, a pretty big grain of salt, so... You know, you mentioned a, a little while ago that, you know, y when you were you were looking for opportunities for fights, whether it was light heavyweight or heavyweight, um, like a, as you think about, you know, the, the goals that you have and, and where you want to be, do you do you see yourself ultimate one division over the other? Yeah, definitely 205, but it's like, you know, I mean, most heavyweights, even in the UFC, just are fucking slobs. Like, I don't think that they're good um watching a lot of them is just like like what you know what i mean it's like what do you like and if you watch them but here's like really telling if you watch heavyweights outside of the ufc it's like dude maybe you could put together 10 good ones across all of the promotions 
You know what I mean? And it's like there are good fighters out there, especially I think Bellator is a pretty pretty solid heavyweight division. But it's like, man, it's just I think there's easy money there. Um, you know, I train with some of the best heavyweights, so it's like I look at some of these other guys, and it's like, jeez, you know what I mean? Like two hundred five is definitely preferable. I mean, cutting weight sucks, but it is like <clears throat> if that's if I have to go across two divisions to get fights, because once you get to like. I mean, even 85, to be honest. But really, once you get to, like, 205 and, and heavyweight, it's there's not a whole lot of guys out there. You know, and that's even in the UFC. Like, you know, I said this forever. Uh, back, Dom Reyes was training with us for a bit. I think he was, like, 6-0, and and he was fighting John Jones. You know, and you look at, like, I think there was a time when Drew Dober, who fights in uh, lightweight, he had won, like, five or six straight, and he had, like, just broke on the top 15. You know what I mean? So it's, like yeah it's a lot less crowded than the heavier division mm -hmm. so it's like it can be tough to get a fight anyway you know what i mean so if i have to go across two divisions it's okay i'll do it no problem you know when i, when I was going through your instagram uh one of the things that stuck out to me was that back in uh july uh you got published on, on a hunting magazine so uh how did that kind of come together on the side, I just do a lot of writing just to, to earn money as well, and yeah, mainly finance-based stuff. Um, and I actually had another one published here this month. Um, I have to check and see what, what magazine that was in, because I kind of forgot. I, I, I submitted it a couple months ago. Um, but hunting is a big passion of mine, and, and so is writing, so it's uh, it's something that's pretty cool. Um, I want to probably, I'm kind of leaning to doing my own thing and just self-publishing a lot of stuff. Um, but you know, writing, like I said, it's, it's what I do for work. Um, I mainly do financial stuff, which is boring, but, uh, hunting is always fun. I can be creative with it. There's like a, just so much to talk about and, and whatnot. And it's, it was pretty cool. Um, so that one, the first one that I got published was just more about uh, wild boar hunting, which is mm -hmm. still my specialty. You know, my dog's a hunting dog and mm -hmm. you know, I mostly do everything with my bow. I'll, I'll bring a gun sometimes when we do it with the dogs, we, uh, they kind of catch them by the ears and then we kind of have to wrestle them down and then we, uh, we finish it off with a knife. So it's pretty, uh, pretty brutal, yeah. <laughs> not brutal. I should say, cause that's, it's, uh, very hands-on. I have a teammate or two. I have a lot of teammates that have said they really wanted to. And I'm like, I mean, that's about as hands-on as you're going to get. So I, I hope that you can do that. And if you fuck up, that's, you know, they will bite you. You got this fight here, Unified MMA for, uh, 49, December the 17th. So as we're talking, two weeks out from this matchup, taking on Graham Park. Uh, what's your thoughts on Graham as an opponent? Um, You know, it seems like he hasn't really left Canada, um, fighting a lot of local guys there. Um, it seems like the promotion that uh, Unified is just trying to build them up. Uh, we've kind of talked about that. I've definitely fought for promotions that have done that with me. Um, I don't think he's fought the highest caliber of guys, to be honest. Um, I think that he also hasn't fought in about a year, so it's just going to be a tough outing for him, I think. Um yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to be a step up in competition for him. Um, I'm going to be going up into his home territory, but that's not a big deal for me. I actually kind of prefer it that way. I, I kind of like it. So, In terms of uh, your, your key to victory, what, what do you believe is <clears throat> one of the keys for you to walk away with the title? Um, I just got to stay true to my style, stay unorthodox. Um, I do things a little bit different. Um, so I think he's going to have a tough time handling that. Um, with the striking, I mean, I switch stances a lot. So it gets uh, – I mean, even the guys I'm going with every single day, it, it takes them a while to, like, really kind of figure out my rhythm. Mm 